Hello everybody and welcome back to Edge of the Earth. In the last episode we played through to the Forbidden Peaks and we did quite well. Today we're going to be doing Interlude 2, Endless Nights, as well as talking about our upgrades. Let's start there. Lily earned 9 experience from the last episode, so she currently has 23 experience total. So she decided to get the next discipline, Alignment of Spirits. You get plus one willpower. As an action, take one direct damage to heal three horror, or take one direct horror to heal three damage. Flip this asset over. And of course, if she hasn't took any, taken any damage or horror this round, we will flip it back to its unbroken side. We're choosing this for our second one. One, because it gives us more willpower, which is always good. It helps with the Cyclopean Hammer, which, which likes willpower as well. And also, this one is pretty much, I would say, the easiest one to flip back over. So it's a good target for Burdens of Destiny. Speaking of, of course, we have to add a second copy of Burden Destiny to our deck. So you're 9 experiences, as I said. So we are going to be starting with the package. We're going to be getting two Survival Knife 2s. These are in the Return to the Forgotten Age. These are going to be awesome for dealing with enemies during the enemy phase. So that's... She can, um, you know, have her actions be better spent elsewhere or just be able to kill lots of things. She's going to get a second copy of Bandolier 2 to hopefully find it more often. She's going to get a copy of level 2 Beat Cop, so much better than the other allies that we have. And she's going to get one copy of Sweeping Kick. It's a pretty good event for her. It'll automatically evade an enemy. It's pretty good. Also, when we eventually get the Agility Discipline, we'll be able to play this card as part of one of the fight actions we need to take. She's going to be removing the two Dragon Poles, the two Scryings, and one Arcane Initiate for those five cards. All right, Monterey. He's going to be getting another Prophesy of Profana to hopefully find it more consistently. He's going to be purchasing one level 1 Eon chart as well. He's getting rid of both Lucky Cigarette cases for it. He is then going to spend with those last 4 XP, because he earned 10 XP, the Miskatonic Archaeology Funding. Hopefully this will allow us to put both Janae Beauregard, Jeremiah Kirby, and another ally, perhaps the Research Librarian, into play at once. Seems pretty good. All right, well, let us read Interlude 2, Endless Nights. Once again, safe, you and your companions set up camp in silence. You marvel at how much quieter the evening is compared to those that came before. Be it due to your dwindling numbers or the grim mood that hangs over the camp. But the quiet is anything but peaceful. As, as the hours pass, you can't seem to get any rest. You decide instead to check out to check on your companions. You only have enough time to check on a few team members, regardless of whether they are alive or crossed out. One at a time, choose and read three of the sections below. Four instead, if the team found another way through the mountains. We did not. If the game effect of the chosen section cannot be performed, it does not count toward this total, and you may choose a new section instead. After you have read the appropriate number of sections, proceed to end this night too. Well, I've already made my decisions on who we're going to talk to. First, we're going to talk to William Dyer again. He is alive. The professor paces back and forth, running his fingers through his graying hair. They are connected. They must be connected. He rambles to himself as you approach. The elder things in these manifestations, these mirages, he continues, as if to answer your unspoken questions. When we were here last, I saw images of the elder things in conflict with other species, other alien beings. But what if the true source of their fear lies here on Earth? What if, what if they were guarding something? Speaking with Professor Dyer helps you to see reason within this madness. Any one investigator may choose and remove up to five Tekalili weaknesses from their deck, shuffling them with the remainder of the Tekalili encounter set. We're going to choose Monterey with that. He has four Tekalilis in his deck, so he's going to get rid of all four. So, I'll remove those in a bit. Next, we're going to talk to Avery Claypool, since he's still alive. You find Claypool at the edge of the camp, looking out over the alien city. Remarkable, isn't it? You nod and mention that the architecture is unlike ever anything you've seen before. No, not that. I mean, that too. But look, he points to the enormous peaks built to block and funnel the wind. They chose precisely... Oh, sorry. 
Um, fun, uh, he points to the enormous peaks looming around the city in every direction, like a boundary. It's built to block and funnel the wind. They chose precisely the right place to build their city. And the way these structures and streets are built, they're mostly protected from ex excess snowfall. He glances at you meaningfully before continuing. These creatures chose the harshest place on earth to make their home, and despite all odds, they thrived. You wonder if perhaps this means the inclement weather you face thus far will abate during the next leg of the journey. Unlikely, he responds. A lot of the natural safeguards they built into their city seem to have weathered away, and there's likely a lot more ice than there would have been back in their time. But I'll make sure we avoid the nastiest of it. Claypool's predictions help you stay safe from the inclement weather. Remove one frost token from the chaos bag. Alrighty. So now we're back to the only one frost token in the chaos bag, right? We had two. Yep. So there's only one frost token back in the chaos bag. All right, I actually haven't decided who I want to do for the third one. Um, let's see. Rold is dead. We've already taken taken Rold's um, boots, so there's no point in talking, looking through his stuff again. Mala is dead. Mala has like a medical kit. I'm not sure if it's amazing. We could talk to Danforth. Two additional cards. I know that Takeda has 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 resources. Um. Yeah, and Elia has us do um. Um, trauma. We don't we don't have any trauma, so it's not worth it. Um, we could get Mala's stuff. Yeah, let's 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 talk to Mala, I guess. If Dr. Mala Sinna is crossed out, an investigator did not already earn her, mem her Memorial of the Lost card from Interlude 1. You're not sure what exactly compelled you to seek out Dr. Sinna's tent, but now that you're here, you know you won't find any answers among her belongings. Still, perhaps you can salvage some use out of her old medical kits and cold weather gear. As you stuff her medical supplies into one of her backpacks, a shiver crawls up your back. You tell yourself it is out of necessity but helping yourself to the belongings of the dead still weighs heavily on your conscience. You heft the backpack straps onto your shoulder and turn to leave Dr. Sinna's tent, hoping to put this grim business out of, the, out of mind. The quiet clatter of something falling out of the backpack's front pocket catches your attention. You search around your feet for the object and find a small le leather wallet containing only a hairpin, a picture of Dr. Sinna with what you can only assume to be her family and a ticket stub for a show at the Riverview Theater. Without truly thinking why, you pocket it. If it was important enough for her to keep, it must hold some sentiment. Any one investigator may add the Sinna's medical kit story asset to their deck. This card can be found in the Memorials of the Lost in Counterset. It does not count toward the investigator's deck size. All right. Sinna's medical kit. It is a one-cost asset with one willpower and one wild icon. It is item and science. It uses three supplies. As a free trigger ability, exhaust Sinna's medical kit and spend a supply. Heal a damage or a horror from an investigator or an ally asset at your location. Huh. I think we'll give that to Lily. Mainly because she can use it to heal her beat cough. That seems pretty good. All right, that was... Restless sleep, and then we have, to, sorry, endless night, not restless night. Um, endless night too. You try in vain to sleep, but the night seems to go on forever. Your thoughts meandering endlessly in a maze of worry and doubt. If you have played Scenario bleh, Fatal Mirage this campaign, proceed to end, Endless Night 3. We haven't. Otherwise, check the Expedition Team section of the campaign log. If there are three or more names crossed out, skip to Endless Night 4. There aren't, because we only had two people crossed out. Otherwise, proceed to Scenario 3, City of the Elder Things. All right, so next time we're going to be going to the City of the Elder Things. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe. Until then, this has been Superfang99, 
signing off.